in this uh, image, we see the two brachial veins with the artery, brachial artery in the middle, and then to the right, we see the uh, basilic vein, which is non-compressible. For someone who's more novice in using the ultrasound, you might think the basilic is a good-looking vessel in this image, but you know you can start to see what looks like a thrombus, and again, you know, non-compressible vein would be something we'd want to avoid. In this image, I've uh, frozen the picture, and you can see what looks like a hyperechoic structure inside the basilic vein. That's actually the catheter that was inserted through the uh, thrombus. In this clip, we have the probe oriented in longitudinal view, and we can very clearly see the catheter inserted into the thrombus. Uh, additionally, the patient did complain of pain when they were getting an infusion, and they, the site was also pretty swollen, so this was removed. This was on the same patient left side, distal to the AC, another uh, IV that was inserted into uh, another thrombus. Patient was complaining of pain. The site was also, uh, there's a no noticeable palpable cord. Again, this uh, IV was removed and replaced. In this clip, I was having difficulty using short axis, so I went longitudinal, which was no help. The reason was is that there's a bifurcation where the basilic and the brachial vein meet. So what you have to do in these situations is slide your probe back and forth and orient your needle towards the direction of bifurcation. So then I start, as you see here, to orient my needle tip to the left of the vessel, and right there I've entered the brachial vein. In this sequence of clips, I'm using the uh, BD Power Glide midline, and what I'm doing is deploying the um, guide wire. And what I like to do here is I use that to help me confirm that the, the needle is actually in the vessel and that when I advance it, there's no question about the success of where the catheter is going to go. It's going to go in the lumen of the vessel. Here is a short axis view as well. I was having trouble obtaining long axis due to just anatomical considerations. So here I am pushing the um, guide wired forward and backwards, and that's allowing me to confirm that I am indeed inside the vessel and I will go ahead and advance the catheter off of the um, midline device. And in these situations, it, it might seem obvious, but I'll still explain it. You'll just slide the ultrasound probe more proximal to your insertion site until you can get confirmation uh, visually using the guide wire movement forward and backwards. In this next clip, it stresses the importance of using color Doppler. And I've been called to many rooms, asked, is this IV still functioning? They have questions about it. You know, you scan the vessel, again, proximal to the insertion site, and put on color flow, hook up a flush, and then do a power flush. You don't need color Doppler, but this really is a definitive uh, confirmation that you are, in fact, still in the vessel. This image, it's not necessarily the best representation of infiltration, but it will look a lot like, like adipose tissue that you would see just scanning an arm. And uh, those little arrowed sections, those are usually definitive markers of infiltration. Also consider other clinical indications. You have a site that's swollen, pain is, patients complaining of pain. You know, you kind of put two and two together and it's pretty clear that this is an infiltrated picture. This clip demonstrates the importance of understanding fluid status in a patient you're trying to insert into. Uh, this particular patient was actually very fluid negative. Their hemoglobin was extremely low. So there you could see a very collapsible IVC. And as somebody who has such a collapsible IVC who's also not intubated, that is worrisome beyond just uh, IV insertion. So uh, I knew what their ejection fraction was. It was 60%. I was able to ask for a 250 bolus. They had a little thumb IV. That was enough to provide me safe access for this patient, and it was also a good thing because they had not ordered a hemogram. Uh, the next one was due the next day, so they ended up getting blood, and they had already gotten the 250 bolus by the time they received blood, and when I came back to place a line, it was extremely easy. Um, you will note that the uh, liver and the IVC are oriented to the right. They're incorrectly oriented. Uh, ultrasound tech had messed with the ultrasound, and kind of flipped the image, so that's why you see it that way.